Are you struggling with neck pain and wondering what you can do right now to try to help it? Or maybe you have difficulty turning your head to the side like to check your blind spot and you're wondering if there's anything that you can do right now at home? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today because I was super excited and I'm gonna geek out on you guys for a minute here um, about a new study that just came out in the Journal of Manual and Manipulative Therapy. Now, the reason why I was super excited about this study in particular is it proves something that we have known in the clinic for quite some time, but it's never actually been proven with research. And it's always nice when something that you know but you don't know know gets actually proven. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. What they did is they did a study where they were seeing how each segment, each level of your cervical spine, so that's your neck, and your upper thoracic spine, so that's your upper back, move during rotation. So rotation is when you're doing this, side to side, okay? So they were studying how it moves during rotation in people who had neck pain and people who did not have neck pain. Now this was really interesting because they had uh, nine patients who had neck pain, 11 who did not have neck pain, and I understand that that's a relatively small study, but their results were very significant in what they found. And what it was is that people who had neck pain had more rotation, so it's called a hypermobility, in this area of their neck, kind of the lower neck area, but all of them had less rotation or hypomobility in their upper back. So what that means is that when you're trying to rotate, the reason why you can't is because this area is trying to move too much and then the upper back cannot move enough. This is really great news for you to know because that means there's something that you can do about it at home. So a lot of people have um, put out their upper neck stretches and, and those can be really helpful too. We definitely have some here. We'll link those for you below if you wanna look at those to get the upper neck moving better. However, if you need help getting your upper back moving better, there's a really simple stretch that you can do that will be safe for if, if your mid cervical spine is not moving correctly. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take the hand that you wanna to turn towards, and usually we do this in the direction that is painful, or is limited. So you're gonna take that hand and you're gonna use it to make a collar behind your neck. Now, I'm putting my hand right on my neck because that's gonna hold that area stable and not let it move, all right? So you're gonna make a collar on your lower neck there and then you're gonna turn and you're gonna turn that whole collar together and kind of lead with your elbow. So it's going to get your upper back moving while still keeping your lower neck stable. So you can do this 10 times until you feel like you're getting a little bit more movement there. Now, it's really important that if when you do this, you have any pain to stop, but what that probably means is that you're not holding a firm enough collar. So you don't wanna like grip your neck or anything like that, but you do want to hold it firm because when that upper, that middle neck, the about C5 through C7 is what they found, um, starts rotating, it gets really painful because it moves too much. The collar provides you with a little bit of stability and a little bit of support so that you can start working on the upper back area because when that gets stiff, then that limits your rotation. If you have any questions about this, please drop them below. We love answering your questions and it helps us to know um, what videos need to be made next. If you try this, definitely drop it below and let us know how it worked for you. And if this is good, but it's not quite what you need, then I highly recommend that you find a manual therapist who is up to date on their research, but also has a really good sixth sense about clinical stuff because a lot of things, like I said, we haven't been able to prove yet, but we know it in the back of our heads. So we always rely, manual therapists always rely on kind of that sixth sense of what they've seen in other people, but we always appreciate when the research backs it up. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye.